With me tonight from the L.A. Courthouse, defense attorney Deborah Opry. Also with me tonight from Los Angeles, criminal defense attorney Midwin Charles. All right, so there were brand new details coming fast and furious today from the witness stand about Michael's final moments from that paramedic who responded to the 911 call. Let's watch together what he revealed about the chilling moment when he asked Dr. Murray, basically, what the heck happened here? I asked what his underlying health condition was. He did not respond. I asked again what his underlying health condition was. He did not respond, and then he, I think it was the third time, he said nothing, no, nothing, he has nothing. And simply that did not add up to me. Why is that? Uh, um, doctors in the house, uh, IV pull, IV hooked up to the patient. Um, it didn't seem normal. Yeah, I'm no paramedic. Doesn't seem normal to me. You heard the paramedic saying it didn't add up to him. He's got nearly 30 years of experience. That leads to our showbiz flashpoint. Did Dr. Conrad Murray engage in a frantic cover-up? Deborah Oprah, let me start with you. What do you think? Absolutely. Unfortunately, the doctor was Dr. Murray, and he had to take control as a treating physician on the scene. In fact, he did not. He, uh, to me, it was a criminal cover-up because he was taking away evidence from the scene, not answering truthful questions as to what is in Michael's system, what he had administered to him. And in fact, he was telling people to start putting things in paper bags four times over. This is very disturbing because in the end, this was a licensed credential doctor who at the scene of a crime uh, was thinking about himself rather than Michael, who for all intents and purposes had probably been dead for quite a while by now. You know, and I was watching this today thinking, how in the world is this possibly defensible if this is, in fact, what happened? Minwin, no. let me go to you. I want you to put on your criminal defense uh, hat right now. You got it. Does this to you, you look it. like a man engaged in a cover-up? Or, or could there be another reasonable explanation for why he never told the paramedics why Michael was so medicated and what all that stuff was doing there? Well, the whole cover-up idea is the perspective of the prosecution based on the facts that we've seen so far. But the defense is probably going to argue that, remember, this is a doctor who worked for someone who was high profile, very wealthy, and above all, guarded his privacy. Remember, even the security guards had only been in the house once or twice for the months that they worked for him. So he, they're probably going to argue that he was removing these things and not disclosing fully what Michael was on because that's how Michael would have wanted it. That's the only way I can see them explaining this. I mean, listen, I, I agree with, with Deborah. It looks bad. But that's one of the things that I think the defense can do here. Yeah, from, from a layman standpoint, Doctor, first and foremost. From, from a layman standpoint, I'm looking at this and thinking, I don't care who it is. If somebody's in the room dying, all bets are off. You need information, I'm going to give it to you. But uh, again. Well, well, AJ, that's yeah, the that's thing. True. Everybody's saying he was probably already dead. Well, let's move on but to more evidence. But he was a doctor, he was a doctor. Yeah, and that really should be the bottom line. I agree with you. That should be the bottom line. I do see, you know, and I did ask Midwin, to be fair, I asked for your defense standpoint on it, and, and I can see the point yeah. that you're making, which the defense will likely try to make here. Uh, there was more evidence of a possible cover-up coming today in the courtroom when Michael Jackson's logistic chief, this is Alberto Alvarez, he took the stand, and the prosecution is claiming that before Jackson's staff dialed 911, Dr. Murray asked Alvarez to clean up drug vials scattered near Michael's nightstand. This was amazing to me. Watch what Alvarez revealed in court today. Did he then instruct you uh, to uh, take some vials or do something with some vials? Um, yes. While I was standing at the foot of the bed, um, uh, he reached over and grabbed a handful of vials. And then he reached out to me and said, here, put these in a bag. What were the exact words he said when he when he had these vials in his hand and he was reaching them out to you? He said, put these in a bag. Okay. Did you grab a bag? Uh, I, I did. I looked towards my right, and there was a uh, plastic bag sitting on top of a chair. Okay. And so uh, I proceeded to get the, the bag, and um, I, I, I opened it, and he placed the, the vials in, in the bag. Again, this can be looked at as truly damning uh, testimony here. Alvarez testifying that he thought in all the chaos that Dr. Murray wanted the vials cleaned up initially so he could take them to the hospital, but of course that never happened. Deborah, to our Conrad cover of question number one, just how much do you <laughs> think Dr. Murray really knew about Michael's overall health? 
Um, if he didn't know it and wasn't willing to know it, he had to know it. He was his hired treating physician. The most intriguing question that I haven't had anyone speaking about so far during this trial or by the media is why didn't Dr. Conrad Murray have a 24-hour on-call nurse with him? Every doctor in this environment would. Why was he going solo? Why? That's a question we have to ask that goes to the gross negligence allegation, and it's something that we should all be addressing right now. Why was he a solo doctor on that set of Michael Jackson's life? It does seem so. a reasonable question considering the level of care and what was involved in what Michael was receiving and the kinds of treatments he was receiving. I can tell you that yes. every single witness who's testified about being there the day that Michael Jackson died said that Murray was in a pure panic before the paramedics arrived. And that leads us to Conrad cover-up question number two. Exactly when did Dr. Murray know Michael was in danger of dying? Midwin, are you convinced <laughs> at all he had no clue Michael was in danger until he discovered his lifeless body? I can't imagine that. I, I do believe that, and you can tell just by his actions. He, apparently, there was a phone call that came in, or he was talking on the phone with one of his girlfriends, and that was around 11.51 in that morning, and she said the phone just went dead. He stopped responding. He probably discovered at that point that Michael Jackson was already dead. Forget in distress, but already dead. Uh, Deborah, Oprah, let me ask you... The answer, is, go ahead. Go ahead. But isn't the answer to the question really he knew or should have known Michael Jackson's life was in danger when he was administering propofol in a home without a 24-hour watch? Of course. Isn't that the answer uh, to course. this question? Uh, of I think course. He's he should already have not, been convicted. He should have not engaged in this at all. I, I think we already know that. I think everybody but knows I think that. The, it was but absolutely the element of reckless the, for him the to element, do this. The element of gross negligence has already been met by his own conduct as observed by the witnesses right. and the actions he was taken. We, we do Point have to blank. leave it there, but no, I, I appreciate your insight on this. Deborah Oprey, Midwin Charles, thank you both.